2 Chronicles 25, 1 through 28. Devotional Focus Verse But there came a man of God to him, saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee, for the Lord is not with Israel, to wit, with all the children of Ephraim. 2 Chronicles 25, 7. Warnings often fail to change people's behavior. Either the warning goes unnoticed, or the warning is heard but ignored. The latter was the case in the sinking of the British-owned steamship Lusitania by a German U-boat during World War I. The loss of this luxury liner should not have been unforeseen or surprising. For weeks before the ship was to sail from New York to Liverpool, Notices had been published in newspapers cautioning people who were planning transatlantic travel that ships belonging to Great Britain or her allies could be destroyed. That warning even appeared in the New York Times on the day of the Lusitania's departure. The British government had also warned the captain of Lusitania to avoid areas where German U-boats were active. He was told that if he entered such an area, he should zigzag through it by changing course at irregular intervals to foil any efforts by U-boats to plot the ship's course for torpedoing. The captain received additional warnings when he did enter a danger zone, but for some reason he ignored them. In fact, instead of employing the recommended evasive strategy, he slowed the ship down and remained close to shore. This made the Lusitania a perfect target On May 7, 1915, a German U-boat torpedoed the ship, and within 20 minutes it sank, claiming the lives of 1,195 people. Today's text references three warnings to King Amaziah of Judah. One was heeded, though grudgingly, and two were ignored. The result was disaster. First, an unnamed prophet warned Amaziah not to use mercenary soldiers from Israel to fight for him against the Edomites. While Amaziah did follow that advice, he openly weighed obedience against the potential financial impact. The eventual victory over Edom was marred by the mercenaries' reprisals in which 3,000 from the cities of Judah were slain. I'm going to read that sentence again using 30,000 in case that's correct. The eventual victory over Edom was marred by the mercenaries' reprisals in which 30,000 from the cities of Judah were slain. Then a prophet rebuked Amaziah for worshiping the gods of the conquered Edomites. The divine anger expressed by the prophet was a warning an attempt to turn Amaziah from his folly. The prophet told Amaziah, God hath determined to destroy thee, because thou hast done this, and hast not hearkened unto my counsel. See verse 16. Later, King Joash of Israel used a parable to warn Amaziah not to attack his nation, comparing Judah to a thistle and Israel to a strong cedar. Amaziah should have listened to Joash, but he did not, and his nation suffered a terrible defeat in the ensuing battle. Today, several thousand years after the days of Amaziah, we deal with warnings every day, caution lights, traffic control signs, and advisories warn us of potential traffic or weather-related hazards. Medical professionals and fitness experts caution us about dangers to our health and well-being. Politicians and media analysts warn of impending economic and international crises. It is easy to become jaded by the warnings coming from all sides and simply tune them out. Of a far more serious nature than any earthly warnings are the warnings in the Word of God and those are warnings we must never disregard. The greatest danger facing society today is not a lack of biblical warnings, but rather a refusal to heed them. 
Let us purpose to be alert and responsive recipients, because ignoring God's guidance and commands will result in eternal consequences. Background Information Chapter 25 is a record of the 29-year reign of Amaziah, who ascended to the throne of Judah at the age of 25, following the death of his father, Joash. The nature of Amaziah's reign is described in verses 1 through 4, which indicates that he began his reign doing what was right in the sight of the Lord, but not completely. Verses 5 through 12 tell of Amaziah's victory over the nation of Edom. But after the battle, the king turned to idolatry. See verses 13 through 16. He then initiated a military confrontation with King Joash of Israel that resulted in an ignominious defeat for Judah. See verses 17 through 24. Because Amaziah had turned away from the Lord, Verses 25 through 28 record that a conspiracy by his own people brought about his death. Most of the incidents in this chapter are also recorded in 2 Kings 14, 1 through 20. Verse 2 indicates that Amaziah did not serve God with a perfect heart. The Hebrew word translated perfect means to be whole or complete. So even at the start of his reign, Amaziah's heart was not fully set on doing the will of God. Some of his policies were in opposition to God's requirements, such as his allowing sacrifices and incense offerings to continue on the high places. See 2 Kings 14, 1 through 4. Verses 3 through 4 of this chapter also indicate that although he slew the servants who murdered his father, he spared their children in accordance with the command in Deuteronomy 24, 16. According to verses 5 through 6, Amaziah organized a standing army of 300,000 men who would eventually fight against Edom. However, he also hired mercenary troops from the northern tribes of Israel. Using mercenaries in battle was a common practice in the ancient world, but an unnamed prophet cautioned Amaziah not to do so because the Lord was not with Israel. Furthermore, this prophet warned the king that if he did so, God shall make thee fall before the enemy. See verses 7 through 8. Though Amaziah heeded the prophet's warning, he did ask about the 100 talents he had paid to Israel. In essence, he was asking, How much will it cost me to be obedient? The prophet answered, The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. See verse 9. Amaziah wisely obeyed, and the result was a military victory at the Valley of Salt, an area south of the Dead Sea. Though the dismissed mercenaries plundered the cities of Judah on their return home, killed 3,000 people, and took much spoil. See verse 13. Verses 14 through 16 describe Amaziah's descent into idolatry, stating that he brought the gods of the Edomites back to Judah and began worshiping them. When God sent a prophet to reprimand him, the king arrogantly silenced the man of God. However, the prophet pronounced judgment against Amaziah. God would destroy him because he rejected his counsel. Amaziah wanted a showdown with Israel, possibly in retaliation for the mercenaries' plundering of Judah, and the conflict between the two nations is described in verses 17 through 24. The phrase in verse 17, Come, let us see one another in the face, was a challenge to face one another in battle. King Joash of Israel responded with an allegorical reference to a thistle representing Judah and a cedar representing Israel. In essence, he advised Amaziah to glory in his previous victory over Edom, but then to stay at home. Amaziah ignored his words and, as the prophet had foretold, Judah was defeated in the resulting battle. Amaziah became a prisoner of the king of Israel for a time, 
and Jerusalem suffered great losses. Verse 25 indicates that Amaziah lived for 15 years after the death of King Joash of Israel, whose death probably prompted Amaziah's release from imprisonment. However, Judah's embarrassing military loss had undermined any support for Amaziah among the leaders of Judah. He fled to Lashish to escape those of his own nation who conspired against him, but his efforts were in vain. He was assassinated at Lashish. His body was brought to Jerusalem where he was buried with his fathers. Conclusion We may ignore earthly warnings and still escape harm, but we will not escape God's judgment if we ignore His warnings. 2 Chronicles Chapter 25 Amaziah was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jehoadon of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Now it came to pass, when the kingdom was established to him, that he slew his servants that had killed the king his father. But he slew not their children, but did as it is written in the law in the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, saying, The father shall not die for the children, neither shall the children die for the fathers, but every man shall die for his own sin. Moreover Amaziah gathered Judah together, and made them captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, according to the houses of their fathers, throughout all Judah and Benjamin, and he numbered them from twenty years old and above, and found them three hundred thousand choice men, able to go forth to war, that could handle spear and shield. He hired also an hundred thousand mighty men of valor out of Israel for an hundred talents of silver. But there came a man of God to him, saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee, for the Lord is not with Israel, to wit, with all the children of Ephraim. But if thou wilt go, do it, be strong for the battle, God shall make thee fall before the enemy, for God hath power to help, and to cast down. And Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? And the man of God answered, The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Then Amaziah separated them, to wit, the army that was come to him out of Ephraim, to go home again, wherefore their anger was greatly kindled against Judah, and they returned home in great anger. And Amaziah strengthened himself, and led forth his people, and went to the valley of Salt, and smote of the children of Seir ten thousand. And other ten thousand left alive did the children of Judah carry away captive, and brought them unto the top of the rock, and cast them down from the top of the rock, that they all were broken in pieces. But the soldiers of the army which Amaziah sent back, that they should not go with him to battle, fell upon the cities of Judah, from Samaria even unto Bethoron, and smote three thousand of them, and took much spoil. Now it came to pass, after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites, that he brought the gods of the children of Seir, and set them up to be his gods, and bowed down himself before them, and burned incense unto them. Wherefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah, and he sent unto him a prophet, which said unto him, Why hast thou sought after the gods of the people, which could not deliver their own people out of thine hand? And it came to pass, as he talked with him, that the king said unto him, Art thou made of the king's counsel? Forbear, why shouldest thou be smitten? Then the prophet forbear, and said, I know that God hath determined to destroy thee, because thou hast done this, and hast not hearkened unto my counsel. Then Amaziah king of Judah took advice, and sent to Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come, let us see one another in the face. And Joash king of Israel sent to Amaziah king of Judah, saying, The thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give thy daughter to my son to wife, and there passed by a wild beast that was in Lebanon, and trode down the thistle. Thou sayest, Lo, thou hast smitten the Edomites, and thine heart lifteth thee up to boast, Abide now at home, why shouldest thou meddle to thine hurt, that thou shouldest fall, even thou, and Judah with thee? But Amaziah would not hear, for it came of God, 
that he might deliver them into the hand of their enemies, because they sought after the gods of Edom. So Joash the king of Israel went up, and they saw one another in the face, both he and Amaziah king of Judah, at Beth Shemesh, which belongeth to Judah. And Judah was put to the worse before Israel, and they fled every man to his tent. And Joash the king of Israel took Amaziah king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, at Beth Shemesh, and brought him to Jerusalem, and brake down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate, four hundred cubits. And he took all the gold and the silver, and all the vessels that were found in the house of God with Obedim, and the treasures of the king's house, the hostages also, and returned to Samaria. And Amaziah the son of Joash king of Judah lived after the death of Joash son of Jehoahaz king of Israel fifteen years. Now the rest of the acts of Amaziah, first and last, behold, are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel? Now after the time that Amaziah did turn away from following the Lord they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish, but they sent to Lachish after him, and slew him there. And they brought him upon horses, and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah.